possessing Christians. Not all of them have truly entered into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. And so he said this, test yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Examine yourselves or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? In other words, Jesus Christ is your foundation unless indeed you fail the test. 2 Corinthians 13.5 So I urge you, encourage you, uh, one day there will be a judgment of your life either way. As a believer in Christ, you'll be judged as to your rewards. If you're here today and you're lost, you'll be judged and you'll suffer a greater loss in eternity without God. So today the question is, examine yourself. Is Christ in you? That's the question. Do you know Jesus Christ in a personal way? Have you trusted to Him alone as your Lord and Savior? Now having said that in this passage, notice the next thing that's important. And that is that there would be careful construction. That each man be careful how he builds on it. That is solid foundation. You need to exercise great care in the construction process. The word careful there is in a particular Greek construction, which implies an ongoing command. In other words, this building process is need to be uh, careful, carefully undergone all the way through, ongoingly within your Christian life. It's not a one-time thing. The word means literally to see. So it's translated, take heed in the King James. It means to turn the thoughts or direct the mind to a thing, to consider, to contemplate, to look at, to weigh carefully, to examine. When we uh, think about that, be careful how you build. Look back to verse 10 earlier where it says that Paul was a wise master builder. Do you see that there? Greek term wise, Sophia, talks of practical wisdom imparted by God himself. Master builder is an interesting term, it's the Greek architecton, which sounds like architect. It has a similar connotation to it. So Paul himself was a wise master builder. He was wise because Christ himself imparted to him this wisdom and how one would construct this Christian life. And fortunately for us, it's written down for us in the epistles. But he was a wise master builder, and he tells us all to be careful how we build. Now, I built a lot of buildings in my day. Uh, I built some dog houses, and to be honest with you, when I built those, I didn't take a lot of care. You know, I just slapped them together just for the dog. What does he care? <laughs> a little different when I build a house. A lot more careful. And uh, if you're going to go about building a house, and I built, I built a house, and that was the last one I'm going to build. It's a lot of work. There's some things you need to do. Number one, you've got to build according to the plans. And it's extremely important that you do that. When I built my the house that we live in now, we had some plans that the architect drew up for us. And everything was done was done according to that set of plans. It would have been foolish for me to ignore the plans. Things would not have fit well together, nor would they have passed inspection. And for the believer in Christ, you build carefully when you build according to the plans, God's Word. Somebody has said the Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. At any rate, uh, they are God's instruction to us, and He's given us instructions in the how to build our Christian life, or how God is going to do that. In Matthew 7, 24 through 27, Jesus said, at the end of His Sermon on the Mount, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, and the floods came, the winds blew and slammed against the house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house in the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and slammed against the house, and it fell. Great was its fall. You know, every believer in Christ needs to say on an ongoing basis of his Christian life, but what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about how I am to think? What does the Bible say about how I am to live? What does the Bible say about what am I to say? And that should be an ongoing consideration for you as a believer in Christ. If you're going to build carefully, you need to exercise great care in each step of the process. It doesn't matter if you're laying the foundation or just pounding nails. 
if you want to have a quality building, you need to be careful every step of the way. Uh, the saying is, measure twice, cut once. And it's an example of how you exercise care in that process. <laughs> it needs to be said that many of us are quite careful in our jobs and our hobbies, but when it comes to our Christian lives, we don't exercise the same degree of care. I think it's absolutely true. Most of us are quite industrious, would never dream of doing our jobs haphazardly. And if we did, we might find ourselves out of a job. And in our hobbies, we are careful to learn the latest and best techniques and buy the latest and best equipment. But far too often, we're happy to expend little effort and care in the building of our Christian lives. And so you step back to look at them, and they're not as appealing as they ought to be. Some parts are out of plumb. Parts of the siding are falling off. Perhaps the paint is peeling. What is needful is for us to be good students of God's Word. 2 Timothy 3.15 Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed accurately handling the word of truth and not just knowing how to understand it but also applying it to our Christian lives. <coughs> Ephesians 5.15 has it this way, therefore be careful how you walk. If you want to build carefully, you're going to walk carefully in your Christian life. A third step in that building process is you need to let others examine the work from time to time. If you're building a house, you must have work inspected at various intervals. Oftentimes the inspector might require you to make a few changes. Beyond that, if you're building, you will oftentimes have someone else help you in the work. And I know for myself, I had people who knew a lot more about building than I did who came by to help me. Oftentimes you might miss something, but you're helping to see it. God has provided us a number of inspectors, so to speak, to help us be careful in the building process. Of course, he is the greatest helper of all. He knows how the construction process is going. He knows all of our mistakes. He knows where things are moving along well. He's provided the Word of God as the plumb line by which we can measure our work. Hebrews 4.12 For the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both doings and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of our heart. 2 Timothy 3.16 teaches the same truth and says all scriptures inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so the man of God may be adequate and good for every good work. Beyond that, God has also put fellow believers into our lives to help in the building process. The fact is, we are all building and being built together. The blueprint from which each of us is working is the same. And how important it is for us to keep that in mind. What does the finished building look like? What is the goal that we're after? Well, it's nothing less than the likeness of Christ himself. It is the virtues that are part of his character and nature. That's the blueprint. And we're all working on that same goal. And so we as brothers and sisters in Christ have the privilege and opportunity to help each other in that building process that we're going through. Our progress is measured in terms of likeness of Christ. And as we use our gifts and speak the truth of love and admonish one another towards that end, we will move towards that goal. Third thing, part of building carefully is that we would use quality materials. To build a house, you need a variety of different building materials. Some materials are more costly or more valuable than others. Some will stand heat and fire far better than others. According to Paul's analogy,